What's up guys, Technicals here. I'm taking a look at my little fledgling 3D print operation I got going on here. Uh, so these, these are my main units. It's uh, four Cobra II Maxes. Uh, I got them because I got the nice big build plate. I can print big stuff. Uh, or if I need to print a whole bunch of little stuff. They've got the capability for it, the build volume. They can go fast. They're cheap. Um, and, you know, you can buy refurbs on eBay for like $280 now. Uh, so if, you know, if Bamboo comes out with a uh, large form factor unit in the future, I'll probably migrate to that because I really like my Bamboo. But uh, these have been working great. They're not without their problems, but, uh, you know, learn to love them. So right now we're doing a prototype for a new mining stand. Got a couple angel wings going here for a character model. This one had a massive failure last night. Yeah, I love it when pieces of filament go underneath and I can't get at it, so. We're doing calibration on this one. Uh, we're doing auto level right now. We'll do the PID afterward because kind of the way I run it is if uh, I have a big problem with the print head, instead of you know taking it apart, trying to fix it and putting it back on, I just keep an extra one. That way I can swap it in no downtime extra one of these on amazon forty dollars so it's you know it's worth keeping it around and i can work on the other one that had the problem so doing like calibrations on that and my original ender 3 uh you know in a pinch back when uh, the kso ultras just first came out everybody was buying shrouds i went i was printing shrouds on this one it took you know eight times as long but uh, every little bit helped so as far as setup goes, pretty simple to start out, you know, and I hope to grow this uh, to the point where like I have consistent sales and then I can move everything into my warehouse because I got 5,000 square feet there. And I'd like to turn this into a proper business. It's just, you know, finding out what sells, what my niche really is, you know, because it's not minor parts, that's for sure. It's just too, uh, it's just too inconsistent minor stuff. You know, I need to look into the other stuff. So I'm trying different things. Uh, but anyway, mainly I run a mix of uh, just regular PLA and rapid PLA plus. Once my regular PLA is exhausted, I'll probably just go exclusively into rapid PLA plus because uh, it goes faster. It's a little better product. And the cost, you know, if you buy it straight from Elegoo, it's, it's virtually, it's nothing. It's pennies. Uh, got this from Voxel. Heard they have really good PLA. Uh, so I'm going to try that out. I've uh, been doing some stuff in Pet G. This prototype will eventually be in Pet G. Got my colored stuff here. That's mainly for the bamboo. As far as filling it goes, I take the arm off and I made these little filament guides. I made these little extensions um, for the runout sensors. I put chains on all of them so the cables don't get all jammed up and stuff. You know, because sometimes when this head comes back into its home position, it'll crunch up the wires. So these uh, spine chains work out really well. These drag chains work really well. Uh, tangle proof uh, dealies here, rollers. I find these work great. I've tried a ton of different ones, uh, ones that hung and stuff like that. These just work the best. Uh, sometimes, you know, when the print starts, it might loop around this and get caught and, you know, fail. But overall, you know, I really like the idea of not putting excess strain on the extruder, trying to pull a heavy roll of filament that's on a, you know, that's not on, because these are on bearings. So it's real easy for it to pull. Got them all set up that way. And uh, yeah, so these are the main workhorses. Got a second circuit coming in here uh, because the circuit this one's on feeds the rest of the garage. And when these are both chooching, I mean, they're both chooching right now, it'll spike, you know, 800, maybe close to 1,000. The power supplies are rated for 500 watts. I've never seen them go that high. 800 is probably about the max, but it's probably about the max I want to put on that circuit. And then this one is power I stole from the garage door opener because that's a 20 by code that's a 20 amp circuit and 
the garage door opener pulls like seven maybe when it opens. So that's plenty of room to run these two. And then the ender, when it's on it, I mean, it's like ender pulls nothing anyway. And so that's my main setup for production. Nice and organized, out of the way. Doesn't interfere with her parking. Keeps everything in here. Also, my garage is AC'd. So, you know, a lot of people are crazy about keeping their filament dry. And then, you know, this garage stays AC'd and dry pretty well. But uh, maybe in the future, put these in containers with some desiccant. You know, my open rolls, I keep in this tub. And every time I open a new filament, you know, it's got a desiccant pack in it. I just toss it in here. You know, I'm not, I've never had any blistering or popping or anything. And it, it's, I've had it really humid in here before. You know, it rained a lot. And I've still never had an issue. At least I noticed. Uh, as far as the set, these, these are, you know, bed slingers, shakers. And so they shake violently. And you know, I've got two of them on a table. And you would think like, oh, they're gonna interfere with each other. They really don't. Um, I kind of went a little crazy on this table. I ram set it, or I didn't, I uh, tap conned <clears throat> a uh, shackle into the cement, put a turnbuckle, and then attached times two plus wall brackets times three. So this table does not move. It just doesn't. I mean, even with both of these going, you can kind of barely feel it. This table's solid. I didn't do that on this one. I just uh, went two bars into studs and it does a pretty good job. So yeah, that's uh, that's the main workhorses. And let's take a look at the bamboo. All right, gotta be quiet. I don't want the dogs to bark. So my office is in there and I've got this closet that I repurposed as my bamboo closet. So I just pulled everything out, simple shelf. Put the shelf on some two by fours and actually put foam all underneath this vibration compensation because I didn't want the, the vibrations telegraphing into the walls and you can like hear it. So it, you can't really hear this at all. Plus I've got it on the anti-vibration feet. Two AMS units, so I print eight colors. I got a bamboo P1P. I ordered the enclosure, enclosure from Voxel. Uh, hasn't gotten here yet though because I'd maybe like to do some experiments with nylon. Uh, but right now, I mean, bamboo is the clear winner in terms of like quality and capability. It's just a better printer. The Core XY is fantastic. You know, right now I'm doing some character prints, which I really like. Um, no one's bought any yet, but I think they're super cool. Um, stole some power here from an upstairs, but this one doesn't pull too much power anyway. Doing a uh, multicolor though, it really wastes a lot of film. I've got it on a UPS as well, just for added measure, but uh, yeah, that's that. These character prints, I don't know if I can really show this, but that's what I did. It's like this artist girl that does these, you know, anime style designs. I just thought that was super duper cool. Uh, some other stuff, got my silencer here. Gonna put that on the Etsy for mining stuff. It does actually a great job uh, cutting out the high high pitch, the high frequency amp miner noise. Um, I mean, it doesn't make it completely silent, but uh, does a really good job. Doing some stuff with you know, gun mounts, stuff like that. And you know, some other stuff in here. Hornet nests, surprise shockingly sold a lot of those. Another one of these character pieces. This is my first like full-fledged multicolor print. Again, not sure if I can really show this, but um, yeah, I just thought it came out super duper great. I mean, there's no painting involved there. It just, you know, comes out. This is obviously a solid color at 500% size. This one's at 400. But I gotta figure, I mean, you know, I've heard that people at like conventions and stuff buy the hell out of these things for hundreds of dollars. I'm like, okay, maybe there's potential there. And like I was mentioning earlier, here's the one that failed this morning. I found out that I've had this happen twice before where it, it pulls it, gets stuck, and then it just keeps extruding and it gets all up in the shit. So that's a, uh, a definitely a hot end replacement. It didn't look at, like it made it 
too much further, but almost definitely, you know, definitely a hot end replacement, which I have uh, an all metal hot end that I would really like. I've got one, it running on Cobra One. And so I think I'll just swap it out for that. That's my 3D print operation going on. Like I said, experimenting with a lot of different stuff uh, just to see what sticks. Um, I think there's a lot of potential in printing like large form factor stuff. Like I'm printing this big, there's this guy on YouTube that he's like, he goes on and on about how many of these coffees, giant coffee cups he sells. And I'm like, I can design that. It's, it's a cup. Um, so I've been doing that. This is at 50%, uh, maybe 50% size. So it'd be twice as big and like, you know, it's just like this super, like a coffee cup lid, very super simple stuff. These kind of lists are for like 500 bucks and you're like, oh, I'm selling so many of them. And I'm like, well, you know, you can't really copyright that. <laughs> so I have no qualms whatsoever about like, if you're like, oh my God, I'm selling out of this thing. Okay. I can design that. I can print that. Uh, maybe that'll work. So trying a bunch of different stuff, you know, I obviously like to get into something that has consistent sales. A lot of people selling on TikTok shop and, and uh, Etsy and Amazon handmade is like a new thing. So exploring into that too, but ultimately with the goal of kind of doing like I did with my first business, which I don't really work at, uh, that I did 10 years ago, you know, just start out at home, scale it up. And then it gets so big, like it requires, you know, proper businessy stuff. So if I can get it to that point and like expand it into my warehouse, where I have consistent sales, you know, I've already got, I'm already leasing the space. I'm already paying the overheads, the payroll, the electricity, the insurance, all that shit. So I might as well, it's like, you know, that's kind of like the big barriers that a lot of people, that stop a lot of people from doing, you know, taking their home business, their side hustle into like real business status is because you have to incur all these extra overheads and all these extra hurdles. I've already done all that. Uh, so now I can just focus on you know, finding a product that sells and selling it and then setting up machines just like mining crypto mining which i like to do uh machines that spit out money so that's the goal that's the plan will it work i don't know but if not i get to print super cool i mean look at this boom <laughs> i mean i think that's cool i don't i realize i'm a 40 year old man printing uh cartoon sex dolls but i think they're so interesting to look at they're it just the capability of the printer really um i like looking at it maybe someone else likes looking at it and wants to pay a few hundred dollars for it hope so anyway if not then i can just put it i'll, I'll go get, i'll donate it to church how about that i'll donate it to the church uh so anyway if you've got ideas you run a 3d print thing let me know in the comments below let me know what you'd like to see uh, and what you think about anything that i just put out so Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. Press like on the video because it's a nice thing to do. I'm the Technicals. See you next time.